Alrighty, let's check out our next question. I need glasses. Here we go. Chit, 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 chit. Um, the diagram below represents two phases of meiosis in a cell. The diagrams are not drawn to scale. Well, obviously, they're not because it's going to be a bit tiny and small. And Okay, what have we got here? We've got diagram one and diagram two. So if we look at diagram one, what are we looking at? Everything is here at the equator. And if it's at the equator, it means... It is going to be meta phase. Remember, meta is the middle phase. But how many rows of chromosomes are here? So rows of chromosomes. How many? Come on. How many do we have here? It is a single row. And if it is a single row, we know it is metaphase 2. All right. Metaphase 1 would have been a double row because you've got your homologous chromosomes lining up at the equator. If it's a single row, it is metaphase 2. Metaphase 1 is double. Metaphase 2 is one row. Okay. And then if we look at diagram 2, we know that they're pulling apart. So if they are pulling apart, that tells us it is anaphase. But which anaphase? Okay. Do we have butterflies or do we have... So do they look like this? So we know, we can see here that they look like this. Okay. Sorry, like that. They look like little butterflies. And if they look like butterflies, it means that there were two rows during metaphase. So this tells us we had two rows. And therefore, if there were two rows, it tells us we are still busy with meiosis 1. This is the start of meiosis. Uh, um, what, what we're going to have is our single set, so to make it haploid. So this here... It's going to be anaphase 1. Why? Our butterflies. And if it was anaphase 2, I'm going to use another color here. If anaphase 2, remember A for pulling apart. How are we going to tell that? They're going to look like this. So we are going to have chromatids, not chromosomes. Okay, so I'm going to just, let me bracket all of this here. So we're looking at anaphase 2. All right, let's check our questions. Oh, we didn't do our labels. Wow, that is unforgivable. Okay, so if we look at our label A, um, that is pointing to the chromatid, but I think it should be pointing to there, which is the sen Tromere. But if it was pointing to that, it would be a chromatid. I just think something went wrong with that line. I've seen this drawing before. It comes from a past exam paper. B is referring to the spindle fibers. Okay. Here we have our homologous chromosomes that have separated. And here we have a single row of individual chromosomes. Okay, identify the following parts in diagram one. A and B, we said that A was the, <laughs> it's supposed to be the centromere. So centromere and B, spindle fibers. Okay, identify the phase that represents diagram two. So we said diagram two was anaphase one. So this is anaphase one. Remember ana for apart. Everything pulls apart. Okay, then uh, state the number of chromatids in diagram one. So chromatids in diagram one how many chromatids have we got here? We've got one, two, three, four. 
four chromatids. Chromosomes in the original mother cell, well, that's easy because if we go back here to anaphase, how many chromosomes have we got? We've got one, one, two, three, four. So, four. So, four chromatids and four chromosomes in the mother cell. Then, let me just get yellow back. What evidence is visible in diagram one that meiosis is responsible for genetic variation? So in diagram one, what did we see here? Look, what is this? And that, and this. What does that show us? All of this is as a result of crossing over, which means that they have swapped the chromosomes have swapped segments. Okay, so swapped, swapped, swapped. And even if we look at diagram two, that piece swapped with that piece, and this piece swapped with this one, and this one swapped with that one. All right, so they have swapped genetic information. So what evidence is visible in diagram one, that meiosis, that we've got genetic variation, is cro methods contain, and this is so easy, contain different segments, okay, um, from the original chromosomes, or the origi original chromosomes. All right, so I'm going to just put in brackets here that swapped segments. Okay, they have been swapped. So they've exchanged bits and pieces. And it's when those exchanges are good, the organism will live, survive, do well. Uh, name and describe the process um, which is responsible for the evidence in four. Okay, that's crossing over. We'll do that now. Let's quickly do this question here. Name the organ of a woman where meiosis takes place. It's going to be the ovary. Okay, and it is going to be the process is going to be oogenesis. And in males, we are going to have spermatogenesis in the testes. You're making sperm. All right, let's do question five. Okay, so we're doing that question here. Name and describe the pros responsible for the evidence mentioned in four. So they want us to do crossing over. That's the process. And crossing over, as we know, takes place during prophase one. Okay, so what have we got? We've got the adjacent um, chromatids. Um, of homologous chromosomes um, homologous chromosome pairs overlap okay the point where they touch and I explained this to you earlier is called the Chysma, all right? And at that chysma, here, DNA segments, segments are swapped. Or you can say they're exchanged. But literally swapped, exchanged means the same thing. You've got the chromatids, they lie over each other, the chysma is the point where they touch, and what do they do? They swap uh, um, information. So they swapped and exchanged, and your results, results in a recombination of genetic material in each of the homologous <laughs> chromosomes. 
Remember, homo means the same. So your homologous chromosomes, one from dad, one from mom, that's what gives us our two sets for us.